what Ananias said to Paul, which Paul obeyed. Will you do that? Or will you continue to say, just do it the best way you know how, or say, Lord Jesus, save me? Paul didn't say that. That's not what Ananias told, told Saul to do, and that's not what that participle tells you calling on the name of the Lord is. He explains what it means in Acts 22 and verse 16. It is an overview, Andres, as you said before, in Acts chapter 2, verse 21. That's an overview of what to do to be saved. The specifics will be gotten into later. And we'll see the same specific that you see here in, in Acts 2 being repeated when Paul becomes a Christian. Arise and be baptized. Wash away your sins for the forgiveness of sins. And this constitutes calling on the name of the Lord. Any other questions before we move on? Uh, uh, Jackson? Yes. I did not mean to be confusing to you about what, what, what you say about, about the Aries tense, and I want you to know that. Um, those basic concepts of the Aries okay. tense, um, we, we do need to keep them always in mind, okay? And, but to understand mm -hmm. that, there are, that there are syntactical usages of those in the Greek language, which add to in some ways and, and make a little different concept and as you go along, I really encourage y'all to get this one called Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics. Also, A.T. Robertson has written a tremendous amount. He has a, a really big volume. Let's see if I can find it here. Yes. Are you able to see what's written there? The grammar of the Greek New Testament. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, wow. Did you notice the difference in the size of that? And I'm not just using size alone. Oh, here's the one that we used in school. This is Davis Greek grammar. Look at the difference in these. Mm. What Robertson does, and again, beyond the basics, this is the basics. This is what most of us had a book set similar to this, what most of us would have looked at. There's a whole lot more with, with regard to that. And just looking at this, you know, I, I don't know of anybody that sits down with A.T. Robertson and his grammar of the uh, Greek New, New Testament. I don't know of anybody who sits down with that and starts saying, boy, I, I'm, I'm interested now in a nice, leisurely uh, morning read. I, I'm sorry, it's, it's not written like that, not written for that. Um, it's just different, okay? So I, I don't mean for you to say, well, I don't know anything about the Greek then. You do. But there are certain syntaxes that you need to be aware of and people like Robertson and people like Wallace will point those syntax that, 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 that uh, uh, syntax out to you. Okay, by six and by syntax, I mean how the language is stuck together, how it's put together. It can be an idiom. We already looked at an idiom, didn't we? With regard, our, did did we do that? Yes. Well, no, I'm not sure. Uh, the 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 phrase where um, Jesus is asked if he is no, we didn't. That, that's in another class I'm teaching right, right, right now, uh, in, in a hermeneutics class that I'm teaching. Um, Jesus is asked, are you the king of the Jews? Do you remember what some of the passages tell us that he responds, how, how he responds? The old King James used to say, thou sayest. Thou, thou sayest is, is the way that it gave an answer. And the reason they did that is because the, if I take that Greek literally and bluntly, that's what it says. However, Mark comes along and gives me a parallel passage to that. And when he's asked, Jesus says, I am. Now, when people saw that term, thou sayest, when people saw that, that, that term, many, that is in the other uh, gospel account, they began to say, well, Jesus never, never said he was king of, of, of the Jews. He never said that he was that messianic king. That's something he never said. 
he said well that's what you say or you know you say that i didn't necessarily say it but but that's not what that term thou sayest me that is a greek idiom and, and i need to syntactically look at it and run it across the, the entire new, new testament that phrase across there guess what i come to find out it's so it it's a way of saying it is as you say or as mark says i am what 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 you said is true okay that was a greek idiom saying that and so i need to keep that uh in 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 my mind there are idioms in the new testament just as there are idioms in in uh in in, in our language okay uh, you know one of the idioms that we use is a person might make a statement some and uh, or uh, he, he might return an answer to something and somebody say wow that was totally off the wall what, what what's meant by that english phrase off the wall was anything ever on the wall see that's that's english idioms and that's it's very difficult sometimes uh, to understand those idioms and here's another problem that we have with english idioms in the syntax of, of the english language there are a lot of them that are different in different regions and in different places of the world where english is spoken and it makes it very difficult sometimes for somebody who did not grow up with english to hear something said and they'll hear it and they'll kind of twist their head not realizing what they're hearing is an idiom just not understanding that because it didn't grow up with it now for us it just comes blooping right out andres i'll bet you there are some idioms in in the language uh, where where you are now that there are idioms in that language that just throw me completely off if if, if i heard them said because mm -hmm. they're they're not literal to it okay yeah. that and that that happens in every language okay and and here i am <laughs> a person who's trying to learn let's say i'm trying to learn spanish okay and and that, let's just suppose that that i am and somebody says okay this word means this this word means this yeah but when you set it together in a certain series or with certain it means something different and yeah. it's the same in the greek okay so i have to look at syntax i have to see how things are put together in the greek language it moves beyond the idea that that um of what you know that just one word for word meaning and, and oftentimes setting together well <laughs> you're going to learn later that there's a way of saying hearing without understanding what you're hearing and hearing with understanding of what you're hearing yet the same words will be used but the cases will be different and the difference of the case will make a difference and and what what, what do i mean by cases nominative case genitive case dative case uh the accusative case are, are you following me uh, sometimes something can be the vocative case uh, mm -hmm. i need to see where the case is and then i need to look how across the book or across the text that the case interacts with that verb and not only there but in koine greek examples outside the bible I need to see how those things interact. Make sense? Makes sense. Now, yes. for just for the record, <laughs> that's not easy. That takes work. That takes work. But I'm answering a whole lot of theology that is false, and I'm answering it across the centuries. I'm answering it as it has come to me in my own present day and time. And you're going to be answering it the rest of your life. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the best tools to be able to understand what's happening. Okay. Thank you, brother. It's Thank listen, you. listen carefully. Preaching is work study to show yourself give diligence that word for study literally means to give diligence to show yourself approved unto god look at this next word a workman that's a person that gets in there and sweats with it i i i, I watch a lot of people enter into ministry today who evidently think that they're coming into it um how do i say this as an easy job with good money 
I'll grant to you that you can treat it like that. I'll grant to you that, that it, it can, that, that you can go through. And I've seen a lot of preachers in my lifetime who look at it as being a profession, something to just get through so they can go through life and don't have to physically sweat so, so much, but it is a mental work. And let me tell you something, a mental work can leave you totally exhausted. It'll make it sometimes so you can't even think enough to, to, you know, butter a piece of bread. Something simple. 